It is 649. This is your morning in eight minutes. Some of you waking up to the sound of thunder. Yeah, we want to get right over to Chief Meteorologist Heather Haley tracking it all. We even with the WVLT first alert day for later on this evening. Good morning, Heather. Good morning. Yeah, and I want to stress, yeah, the morning thunder is probably what woke you up early, but that is not what we have a first alert weather day for. When we add in the heat of the day today, that ramps up the intensity, and that's when we have a damaging risk. So those of you hearing the thunder, I know that that was uh, not how you wanted to start your day, but we will continue with more rounds of scattered storms at times throughout the afternoon and isolated damaging wind is why we have a first alert for this afternoon starting at two o'clock. So this morning it's heavy rain and frequent lightning, but that's not what makes it severe. I know it's noisy, especially picking up some clusters of storms. Brand new lightning strike just went off in Clinton. Got about 145 lightning strikes in our area. You want to give yourself some extra time picking up some small hail between North Cumberland and Jamestown area. Of course, the heaviest rain right here between Oak Ridge and Clinton into Morgan County and Fentress and still some good heavy rain between Knoxville, Seymour, Sevierville to Newport, but that's what's happening now. We'll track more about what's on the way here in a moment. Getting a look at your first alert traffic, like Heather just said, definitely need a few extra time, a few minutes. If you're just now getting out the door to start this rainy Thursday morning commute, this live look at I-40 just east of West Hills. You can see it's already busy out there on the interstate. We do have a disabled vehicle off in the right hand shoulder. No lanes are blocked, but this rain could slow you down as you are getting out the door. Those views do vary though. This is a live look at I-40 right around Watt Road doing much better. No issues there on the interstate. The rain slowdowns really kind of quickly cleared up on I-275 and I-40 through downtown Knoxville. But again, give yourself a few extra minutes to be cautious on your commute. Whitney, thank you. This is your morning in eight minutes right now. Investigators trying to figure out what caused a fire that destroyed a house in South Knox County. Everyone's okay. No one was home at the time. When they got up to the house on Brown Road, the fire already consumed half of the home. Rural Metro says they had serious water supply issues. The home is a total loss. And this morning, a Knox County officer is recovering in the hospital after police say her partner accidentally shot her in the leg. This happened Tuesday night. According to the sheriff's office, a dog started attacking Officer Lydia Driver, while the two were responding to a call on Brickyard Road, her partner, Jordan Hurst, tried to subdue the dog but accidentally shot Driver. Hurst is now on administrative leave. That's protocol. The dog is now at Young Williams Animal Center. Officer Driver had emergency surgery and at last check was in the intensive care unit. Sheriff Tom Spangler commenting on what happened, saying, quote, law enforcement is a dangerous profession. It's unpredictable. Officers deal with people in situations the average person will never experience in their lifetime. This incident is unfortunate, but we will get through it together. He went on to say he's grateful for the supportive community. And a man is dead after falling off a boat yesterday afternoon. The boat then ran over him. This happened on Chickamauga Lake. The TWRA says a woman and child were with him. And a passing boat pulled the man from the water, tried to revive him, but he later died at the hospital. His death marks the 17th boating-related death in Tennessee so far this year. And changes could be coming to Knoxville's cat buses. There's going to be a public hearing today to talk about them and vote on a proposal. Staffing shortages have the city considering to cut certain stops. If approved, the cuts will start the end of August. The public hearing starts at 3 o'clock this afternoon at the City County Building. We'll put a list of the proposed changes in the WVLT News app. Knox County students rebounding from learning loss suffered during the pandemic. The school district reports they're now right around where they were before the pandemic. Students at all age levels are improving in English and math. The superintendent attributes the success to smaller tutoring sessions, summer camps, and people having the option to be back in the classroom again or really getting the hang of virtual learning. And new this morning, you may see more construction happening on Chapman Highway. Crews are starting on phase two of Kern's Bakery. The space will be a mixed use development inside the historic bakery building. They'll have a food hall with 18 different businesses, an office space, an entertainment area, and a rooftop bar. Some of those popular food trucks you see around town are going to have their own shops here. The third and final phase of Kern's Bakery still in the planning stage, but the food hall does plan to open next year. And around the nation this morning, the suspect accused of carrying out that attack on a July 4th parade in Highland Park, Illinois, showed no emotion as he made his first court appearance. He is charged with seven counts of first degree murder. Police say the 21 year old confessed to the shooting and that he considered attacking another parade in Madison, Wisconsin. He's being held without bond. Seven people died. Those killed range in age from 35 to 88 years old. The two youngest, Arena and Kevin McCarthy, leave behind a two year old son. 
Well, there could be more interest rate hikes on the way. The Federal Reserve says we may need significantly higher rates to help curb inflation. Minutes from the Fed's mid-June meeting indicate higher rates could be needed to rein in spiraling inflation. At the same time, the central bank acknowledged rate hikes could weaken the economy. After last month's meeting, the Fed raised its key rate by three quarters of a percentage point. That was the biggest single increase in almost three decades. And a new report from the Labor Department shows the demand for workers is still high. The report shows there's 11.3 million job openings down slightly from the previous month, but still near record levels. Sevier County is getting hit hard. The county's Economic Development Council says since 2016, the county's had a labor shortage. They believe the solution is looking at more housing so employees don't have to travel from neighboring counties. WVLT proud to be your official station of the Vols. Neyland Stadium getting a little bit sweeter. The second set of VOLS letters getting installed on the stadium yesterday. The first set put up on Tuesday. The letters last appeared at the General's house back in 1999. You'll get to see them live in person for Game 1 against Ball State on September 1st. 655 now. All right, let's talk more about what's going on today. This morning, yes, we have the scattered downpours and storms in parts of our area that'll become more spotty mid to late morning, and then it'll pick back up to scattered storms. But that intensity is there for a risk for isolated severe storms this afternoon to early evening. So try to help you visualize the difference between now with low 70s and high humidity and scattered rain and rumbles of thunder. And then the afternoon higher heat ramps up the storms a bit more, and that's the difference here in that risk for severe weather in the first alert weather day this afternoon. So those scattered storms start developing midday to afternoon, keeps heating up, highs 96, feeling 10 degrees warmer. So there's the isolated severe storm risk, and then it'll slowly get back to spotty later this evening. Here's a quick look at that rainfall ahead. So you can see these spikes up to half an inch to an inch of these blues to purples and reds. That's what we're keeping an eye on for you with those downpours and storms kind of embedded in the otherwise scattered rain and storms and that isolated severe storm risk with your first alert weather day today. We do have more on and off rain and storms still the next couple of days as well. Got a lot to track for you coming up on the CW. All right, Heather, thanks. Yeah, definitely a good idea to download that WVLT first alert weather app. It tells you exactly what's going on. All right, we're headed on over to WBXX. Thanks for joining us this morning. Have a good day.